Yo, what is up? It is your boy Zevi here, and I'm back to drop What If Deku Had Tasmanian Powers. It's been a while since I felt the OG vibes running through me, and it's about time that I could bring back something that OG's other would have probably made. Something like, what if Deku had Tasmanian devil powers. This what if in particular is actually going to be in collaboration with We The Celestials. Yup, the people that you probably never expected to be featuring on this channel are finally gonna be featuring on this channel. So definitely make sure you guys check them out if you guys like their voice or anything about them and show them some love. Let them know Zether sent you. But with all that out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into it. Hey Ross, sauce it up. been quite some time since i've stayed up all night thinking about a what if and just being so excited to record something what if deku had tasmanian powers is probably gonna be one of the goofiest what ifs that i'm gonna do in a while so definitely make sure if you guys like this one y'all leave a like on this one because a lot of hard work's going into it but let's get into it so all right so i first got to start this what if by explaining to you guys what tasmanian powers are have you guys seen lego ninjago yes you have okay perfect that's pretty much what it is he's gonna have the ability to spin around like crazy like a mini tornado and rip things to shred if you guys have ever seen looney tunes or the looney tunes show then you guys know my boy taz he don't play no games he has tornado powers he he has enhanced strength, retractable claws, enhanced speed, and he can create a decent sized tornado. That's pretty much going to be the quirk that Deku's going to be born with. And the day that Izuku's born, the bro's literally going to look like a furry. <laughs> Bro's literally gonna look like a furry. It's gonna be try. It's gonna be a tragic upbringing, but you know, like uh, there, there's nothing that a little haircut can't fix, right? But regardless, when Izuku's born, Inko looks at him and she's like, "Hey, yo, like, what is this?" But since in the world of my hero, those kinds of things and like physical aspect changes aren't seen that crazy, so Izuku will be just fine. But during his early years, he will have a little bit of fur on him, and one thing that Inko will notice is that Izuku will grow up being a little bit. A little bit aggro he's a little angry to anger and you know he's going to be very much so kind of like bakugo when it comes to his temperament he's not gonna be the normal person that he will be in the original and deku will always be hungry deku will have an ability to be able to literally consume anything whether it be wood concrete stone plastic he can literally eat anything he has these sharp sharp teeth that izuku can use to just absolutely eat anything and his stomach is created as such to the point where he can consume anything and digest whatever it is that he wants izuku would spend his uh, first couple of years being very powerful just due to the fact that izuku doesn't get his quirk he's born with it and his quirk would be called tasmanian devil as it would be a huge reference to the popular and iconic show looney tunes that would have came out years and years ago and deku and bakugo this time are going to be extremely good friends in this timeline you guys might be wondering why well let me break it down to you guys deku's pretty much gonna be a more aggressive bakugo with a huge appetite and just this lust to become the strongest hero ever deku's gonna be just this really cool badass kid growing up and when deku grows up he and bakugo are gonna be training day after day after day after day after day like they go crazy with the training let me tell you guys that and when it comes to their training izuku would have spent his first couple years just pretty much using his tornado like ability using this spin jitsu kind of right as you know he spins and spins and spins and spins and izuku at first would get very very much so dizzy but eventually he would get used to it and by the time that he would get to the last years of middle school izuku would pretty much be a pro at using his tornado like abilities he just spins out of control and when it comes to his claws izuku would have gotten to a point where he's so physically strong he could just tear something like if he really wanted to he could slash at someone's body and literally cut them like like easily 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 right 
and just this alone would make Izuku very much so powerful, but just keep in mind, having claws and having enhanced strength and having this tornado-like ability will definitely keep him very much so powerful, but he's not going to exactly be the most powerful in the verse. Like, a lot of people will still definitely be able to beat him. Like, let's say someone like Todoroki was facing off against him, he'd probably get his money ran for if Todoroki was to use his fire. But ice ain't no way, because Deku's running through that ice by simply spinning through it. Someone like Bakugo can pretty much just keep a distance and using his uh ability to fly through mid-air could try to keep away from Deku but Deku can kind of sort of levitate because by spinning so fast he can fly up into the air for a short burst of time and try to reach Bakugo which is something that Deku would have learned after years and years of facing off against Bakugo this time around Bakugo and Deku would be so close they might as well be brothers they literally switch off at sleeping at each other's houses often and they're always together like you literally cannot see Deku and Bakugo not together it's it's a rarity it's the biggest rarity ever if you were to see something like that but pretty much Deku and Bakugo grow up and they are just the bestest of friends Bakugo gets a lot stronger because of the fact that he has such a worthy training partner and Deku would always get stronger just because he has as well a very much so worthy training partner they both you know they chill and they hang out and you know they do all their things together and eventually the day of middle school come where the teacher busts in the classroom and he's all like all right kids you know have you guys thought about your futures yes no maybe well here are some career aptitude tests and everybody's like oh like seriously and the teacher's like well you really thought i was playing and then he throws him in the air and goes i was i was just playing boys like 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 i know y'all want to become heroes and everybody just looks at him and they're like oh yeah yeah you know like they start using their quirks and stuff and you know deku would be in the back of the classroom just like arms crossed and just literally passed out as bakugo steps on top of the desk and goes deku and deku wakes up and he's like huh and, you know, he then goes, me and Deku are going to become the number one and two heroes someday. And we're going to be the first two to go into the UA school and become something out of this cruddy school. And Deku stands up on the desk and he's like, yeah. And Bak goes like, all right, uh, well, yeah, they just sit back down. And from here, the lesson continues. After this, Bakugo would be like, hey, Zuku, let's go back to my place and chill. But Deku's like, nah, Bakugo, I think I'm actually going to go home. It's going to be going to be a special day for my mom tomorrow and my dad's actually going to be home so i figure that i'd be there and hang out with them seeing as it's my mom's birthday tomorrow baku goes like all right all right make sure you tell your mom i said happy birthday and i'll drop by tomorrow to give her a little gift and Deku's like, all right, Bakugo, I'll catch you later. From here, you know, he grabs his stuff and makes his way towards the house. He realizes, ah, oh, crap, I'm late, and begins running towards a different path that he usually doesn't take. As he's running, a sewer lid would start to pretty much start shaking, and Izuku turns around being like, what the? As he looks at it, and this green sludgy monster thing comes flying out as it's like, give me your body, kid. Deku looking at the green sludge monster would be like, ugh, you freak, as he's like, what is that? And the sludge monster rises and rises and rises until ultimately it covers Deku, and Deku watches as the sludge monster just continuously grabs him and tries to go into his mouth. Izuku's like, oh, like this tastes horrible, right? And then Izuku's like, get off of me! As he starts spinning like crazy, like a tornado, and the sludge monster literally just gets sent splattering everywhere, right? As Deku, you know, like his claws come out and his teeth get sharper. And he's all like, you mess with the wrong guy today. As he lunges at the sludge villain and the sludge villain gets scared. And right as Izuku's about to pounce on it and like start like slashing at it and continuing to spin, All Might appears and he's like, ah, ha, ha, ha. I am here. As you know, he realizes that this kid is, this kid literally is scaring the sludge monster. And All Might's like, hey kid, stop. As Izuku looks at All Might and he's like, All Might. Like, he looks at him and, like, class go back in. The teeth will finally go back to normal. And, you know, like, he looks at All Might and he's like, like, All Might, I, I, I'm literally, like, your biggest fan ever. And All Might's like, ah, oh, happy to hear that. I always am happy to love support from my fans. And Deck was like, oh, I'm not just a fan. Like, I literally, like, I love you so much, All Might. Like, could I please get your autograph? And the sludge villain is just trying to, like, crawl away. But, you know, Izuku looks at All Might and he's like, hey, All Might, the, the thing's trying to get away. And All Might's like, all right. And then he bottles up the sludge villain with the help of Deku as Deku asks All Might, you know, what's what's the next thing that's going to happen now? And All Might just goes, well, I'm going to go turn this thing into the villains. And Deku goes, think I got what it takes to be the number one? And All Might goes, guess time will tell. But to be a hero, kid, 
you'll definitely be a great one. The way that you acted once a villain was in front of you is something that not a lot of kids your age have. Are you going to be going to UA by any chance? Izuka goes, yeah. And All Might from here realizing that his time limit is almost up just jumps off and goes, I'll see you there. As you know, he flies off and being clumsy, All Might drops the sludge villain, right? Now the sludge villain falls on Bakugo and Bakugo absolutely gets captured by the sludge villain as a sludge villain itself captures Bakugo and explosions would start going off. Izuku noticing this would subconsciously walk over there because he still is going to be kind of nerdy and once he arrives and he notices it's Bakugo, Deku's not playing around. Deku would immediately jump over the crowd as he grabs onto one of the light poles spinning off of it running on top of the building. Izuku then jumps down and starts spinning as fast as he can and the sludge villain looking at him he's like get, get away from me kid i promise i'll kill him if you don't and from here izuku just spins in there and like the sludge villain splatters everywhere and bakugo's like ah! as you know deku's like chill out bakugo i'm right here i'm not trying to get blown to smithereens and bakugo goes deku <laughs> i knew that causing a scene would probably attract you here and from here deku goes of course it has as he grabs bakugo by the arm and rips him out and then he goes what do you say we use a little com uh, combo move and bakugo just goes love it as izuku spins and grabs bakugo by the arm and he spins and spins and spins throwing bakugo straight at the sludge villain with a huge explosion that causes a massive like sonic boom right and from here everybody watching on would be like yeah like those two kids rule and you know Deku and Bakugo would just be looking at each other as they're smirking away and you know they're just thinking to themselves that they definitely went off right there right now from here reporters come in and they start talking to both kids they're like wow like kid like what's it like to save that and then they're like what like what's your relationship to the kid and they're like we're best friends and we're gonna make it to you a and from here you know they both go off and they like they end up doing their own things right and what pretty much ends up happening is Deku goes over towards the direction of his house finally after dapping Baku go up and being like all right catch you later man and you know the other one goes yeah sure Izuku I'll see you later and from here he goes remember tell your mom I said after Happy birthday. He runs off and from the corner, All Might and comes and barges in the way of Deku. And he's like, ah, 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 I am. As you know, the blood comes out and All Might reveals to Izuku. Yeah, he's really not as strong as he seems. And from here, Izuku's like, imposter. As he gets into fighting stance and All Might just goes, no, 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 kid. Seriously, I'm not an imposter. And then he goes on to explain. All right, look, as he tells him, this is how all for one works. I was injured. And yeah. And from here, Izuku's like, oh, okay, okay, I guess I believe it. And All Might just looks at Deku and he's like, yeah, but anyways, point being, I think that you'd, you'd be a worthy successor. Sorry about that, boys. But he just goes, I think that you'd be a worthy successor. And, you know, Izuku looks to All Might and he's like, seriously? Like, All Might, you could have picked anybody in the world and you chose me? And, you know, All Might looks at him and he's like, yeah, of course I did, kid. I mean, who else would I choose? Water break. much better anyways um he goes who else would i choose and you know deku just looks at all might and goes uh, i mean i don't know and you know from here all might says tell you what kid meet me at dagoma beach in two days and we can start training and deku just looks at him and goes two days is perfect my mom's birthday's tomorrow and all might just goes oh well wish your mother a happy birthday and he gives him a signed autograph saying happy birthday inko right and from here izuku is just ecstatic like he just got the number one hero's like autograph he immediately goes home and calls bakugo he's like bakugo you will not believe who just ran into me and just offered me the biggest thing in the world and bakugo's like what deku and deku's like bro all might literally is inviting me to train he wants me to like be a successor and Bakugo listening to this is like ain't no way and from here you know they both link up as Bakugo comes over to Deku's house as they're having dinner and Deku's like bro like you wouldn't believe this and he tells everybody at the table he's like he's like mom like all my literally wants to train me and Yashi he spits his food out and he's like <laughs> All Might and Izuku's like not only that but he gave you this and he gives her this like signed autograph of All Might saying happy birthday and she's like oh my god like you're serious and Izuku's like I have his number and he shows it and it's All Might sending him a picture of a selfie saying see you then right as Izuku looks to his mom and he's like mom like I'm gonna train under All Might 
and Bakugo's so excited and he's like he's literally so excited for Deku there's not even a hint of like jealousy or that should be me or anything like Bakugo like Deku is like a brother to Bakugo and he would never be jealous of his own brother right like regardless of what the situation is and so they're both just so happy eventually they make it up um up to Deku's room and they just play video games for the rest of the night like they're straight chilling they're playing video games and Deku and Bakugo are just doing their thing right and pretty much what would end up happening is Izuku goes on to um what's it called Izuku goes on to essentially tell Bakugo that like he's so excited and Bakugo is just playing the games like I bet as he beats Deku and he's like ha, take that L and Deku's like oh I'm, I'll take any L from now on considering I'm gonna be training under all my and he starts bragging and Bakugo is like shut up dude like hey Put in a good word for me. I want to train under all my two. And Deck was like, bro, like I was already thinking of that. Like the day we go, I'm bringing you with me. And Ibaka goes like, ah, sweet. So eventually the day would come where Izuku was meant to be All Might on Tegoma Beach. And when Izuku gets there, he looks to All Might and pops up with Bakugo as All Might. It's like, oh, you're that kid from the incident, right? And Bakugo is like, yeah, it's me. Like, I'm a pretty big fan as well. I'm like Izuku's brother. And from here, you know, All Might's like, oh, so I'm guessing you also want training as well. And Bakugo looks at him and says, ah, don't worry. Like, I'm just here to train and do the same thing Deku does. Like, I want to become strong as well. And Deku just vouches for Bakugo. He's like, trust me, like, this kid has potential like he's just as strong as me if not stronger and all my hearing this would be very much so intrigued he's like ah is that so from here he goes on to look at bakugo and say well welcome to the team bakugo slapping bakugo on the back being like ha, 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 ha. as you know bakugo just looks at izuku and he's like uh okay and from here you know they start training all my gives them both the same regimen and they both start getting their bodies ready bakugo only does it because you know he's training but izuku is the one who's gonna actually get one one for all right now the training would commence they start cleaning the beach training montage music starts commencing and it's all and eventually they would make it to the point where they finally get to the day of the 10 month training being over and at this point all oh my Deku and all uh, and Bakugo are literally as close as you can get like they've been seeing each other for hours every single day and all might has become sort of a third parental figure to both of them where they both respect him so much and once izuku finally gets handed the quirk of one for all izuku would not know how to control it considering that you know he just gave it to him but seeing as this version of deku is a lot more powerful i say he'll probably be able to handle it he does learn to clench your butt cheeks and think one for all thing obviously and you know they would both make it to the day of the test right they make it to UA, take the written portion, eat us a little annoying sack of, li of, 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 of filth like usual, and eventually they make their way towards the combat portion. Now, obviously, both are split up just due to the fact that they don't want them together. And what pretty much ends up happening from here is Izuku and Bakugo get ready to, you know, start fighting and, you know, like doing their own things, right? And, you know, they're both excited. Like, how excited would you be if you both train together and you're just, you're just ready to show the world how skilled you really are? Like, they are hype. Let me tell you, they're hype. And what pretty much ends up happening is eventually President Mike lets down the doors and everybody's allowed to go over, right? And Izuku, he's just like, oh yeah, like, let's do this. He immediately spins in there and just like as soon as he sees the first robot, Izuku's claws come in and just bam, slashes at that thing, destroying it completely, rushing at more and more and more and more and more robots as using all that training that he's gotten from All Might, he would be able to create a, like, like a level three tornado, which would be able to suck in robots and even some people if they're not careful, right? But luckily, you know, they're all pro heroes in training, so they would be able to dodge it. And you know, what happens is Izuku gets more and more and more points by the second and izuku's just starting to go crazy like my boy literally gets so many points that all might would be shocked using his claws his strength and his iq izuku would be able to amass a grand total of 162 robot points by the time that all might could say like wow and izuku's literally doing all of this with nothing but his own quirk not even activating one for all quite yet but ultimately eventually what would happen is rumbling could be heard from the ground and everybody would look up to see a zero pointer ida and everybody else would run away but not deku deku seeing this thing would think to himself this is the test that i needed as he looks and he hears somebody help help 
help. And Izuku, once he sees Uraraka on the floor, he just thinks to himself, oh, I'll definitely help. And I'm going to crush this thing before it gets even a second closer to you, right? He blitzes towards Uraraka with his tornado spin move, and he rushes her back towards the safe area as Izuku looks at her and says, stay here. And from here, Izuku goes, blah, 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 and pretty much blitz. And pretty much blitzes over towards the direction of the zero pointer, right? As, you know, a gigantic tornado would form. And, like, this thing would be so powerful. It's like a huge level tornado, right? Now, Izuku would be using the power of one for all at, like, literally, like, 20%. And that would be more than enough to form a massive tornado. But Izuku pushes it further and further, eventually making it to 100%. Not, not that he's always capable of using it, but he would rush it 100% and the tornado would get massive as he literally rips oh, an entire tornado sized hole into the zero pointer and buildings would have gotten shot up into it. Izuku stops it. And by the time that he does, Izuku's body would feel like it was just torn to shreds. Izuku's body feels like he just spent 24 hours in the gym going to going to failure with each and every single rep and izuku izuku after he takes out the zero pointer he would look up and see all the destruction he caused thinking to himself maybe i overdid it a little bit but ladies and gentlemen that is where my part is going to be ending and i'm going to be going ahead and handing the mic over to we the celestials Hey, what is up mortals? It is James Hefe here, and let's keep this going. After the exam, Deku and Bakugo both get the message from All Might, letting them know that they've both been accepted into the UA High. Starting with the first day at UA, Aizawa's exam. The main biggest changes that actually happen here is, Deku launches the ball basically into space. It is just gone. <laughs> and of course, without Deku failing most of the tests, because of his new speed and him just being able to blitz most things, the obvious student to expel becomes Mineta, who by day's end is expelled from UA High. Good rinse. Skipping forward a little bit, we get to the heroes vs villains mock battle. The teams will be staying the same as usual, with Deku and Ochako on one team and Bakugo and Ida on the other. Now, Deku and Bakugo actually knowing what each other is capable of, they're both going to make a beeline straight for each other. So there's basically two fights going on. There is Bakugo and Deku clashing and basically demolishing sections of the building. And then upstairs, there's a lot smaller of a scale battle of Ida versus Ochako. With Ochako on the defensive, basically trying to avoid getting caught, and Ida blitzing around. Both of these fights are going to go on for pretty much the entire duration of this. Until there's basically 30 seconds left on the clock, and Deku realizes that he has to do something. So what does he do? He charges up one for all, supercharges himself, smashes through the window, bounces off one of the other buildings, and goes straight in through the wall, grabbing the actual bomb, smashing through the other wall, and going flying with it. He spins midair and launches it up into the sky, with it eventually coming down somewhere else. Bakugo is actually quite impressed by this. He is definitely not happy that he lost that, but Deku's speed and the way he reacted, now that was impressive. <laughs> Chaco and Ida just left speechless. Neither of them had any idea how to even try to react to that situation. He just basically flew through the building, taking the bomb and leaving. There was absolutely nothing they could have tried to do. Now everyone else's little test will go pretty much exactly the same as it normally would. So we can skip ahead a bit more, and we can see Deku and Bakugo actually training against each other now. Deku using one for all, which gives him a leg up, and Bakugo learning to adapt to being on the defensive a bit more. He's actually coming up with a few new strategies to actually block one for all, making him pretty much the only student in the entire class who can actually do anything to try and stop Deku. After a couple weeks of training, it's time for the USJ incident. Things start off pretty much the same as usual with All Might not showing up due to overusing one for all, and then the villains show up. The main difference now, Deku and Bakugo don't look even the slightest bit concerned. They faced villains before, and these guys will be no different. Deku and Bakugo give each other a look, before they launch both of each other. Deku grabbing Bakugo, spinning around and launching him like a missile, and Bakugo blasting the ground out beneath Deku as he launches himself even faster as Deku spins up on that ground that has now been blown up into the air as he launches himself and some of those chunks as missiles basically towards the enemy. The villains basically being bombarded with shrapnel from all of the pavement, Bakugo then blowing into them, and then Deku tearing in like a tornado. As uh, suddenly both of them are swept up by a purple mist and sent away. 
Deku and Bakugo realizing that they're now somewhere else look around and see all of these low-ranking villains smiling at them. Then Deku and Bakugo give each other a look and then they bounce off each other as they begin tearing through these villains. Deku destroying the weapons of and destroying the armor of and Bakugo just blasting away entire groups. These villains did not stand even the tiniest bit of a chance. By the time they're done with their section, Bakugo has actually noticed that Aizawa is in need of help against the Nomu. So Deku and Bakugo, they launch themselves over to the Nomu, just in time for All Might to arrive. They buy Aizawa just enough time to get away without any major injuries, as All Might launches himself over there. Bakugo and Deku immediately try to turn around and re-enter the fight. All Might's having none of it though, as he's just going at it with the Nomu, faster than even Bakugo and Deku can keep up. The Nomu finally gets All Might pinned in a portal, and then Deku and Bakugo both immediately step in, along with the help of Shoto. As the Nomu is frozen, Bakugo is flung at it, blasts it through the portal, and Deku attacks a portal guy, which causes the Nomu to get sliced in two from the portal. The Nomu, as it begins to heal, is immediately grabbed by All Might and launched up into the upper atmosphere. The villains immediately start trying to retreat, but with the portal guy slightly distracted by Deku, they are forced to fight a little bit more, giving All Might almost the opportunity to take down Shigaraki right as the portal opens, and All Might is now outside. This buys them just enough time to make their retreat. After the villains have made their escape, Deku and Bakugo look around, and they see that dozens of pro heroes have shown up from the teaching staff, moments too late to take part in the fight. Skipping forward a bit, just a couple days, and we'll be picking up with All Might going over a few things with Deku and Bakugo. He tells them how impressed he is with how they actually handled themselves and handled the whole situation. They did the work of actual pro heroes for once. Deku seems quite pleased with himself, while Bakugo is slightly disappointed they didn't get a takedown that big guy once and for all. Then all three of them begin practicing together, trying to figure out how should they actually deal with teleporters like that. Bakugo works on a sudden stop to make it sure that he's able to actually adjust, and Deku begins working on his air movement, using his Tasmanian Devil quirk to actually get up into the air and one for all to step around in the air. It's now time for the UA Sports Festival training. Azuku actually gets some pointers from All Might on how to actually incorporate both quirks into his fighting style, and it leads to Deku basically achieving this newfound speed demon form. And while he can only maintain it for a few minutes at a time, he is basically unstoppable in terms of speed. However, immediately after he drops it, his body is just so strained from all of the one for all supercharging while maintaining the super speed from the Tasmanian Devil quirk. During the first round of the UA Force Festival, Azuku is able to basically launch himself right out of the get-go. With one quick one for all assisted step, he and Bakugo are flying. He throws Bakugo towards one of the giant mechs, and Azuku takes on the other, both destroying the zero pointers. They then bounce from there as Bakugo launches himself with a massive wave of explosions. And Azuku basically air steps and then tornadoes his way there, spinning up so much dust that most of the other students can't even see them, quite literally leaving them in their dust. It's pretty much a neck and neck race for Deku and Bakugo as they're trying to cross that finish line. For every step that Deku has to slow down to take, Bakugo basically just propels himself forward. Then when they get to the rope section, Deku spins up a storm and launches himself by stepping on the ground at the right place at the right time, with one for all supercharging his step propelling himself straight across. By the end of the race, Deku's barely managed to edge out at Bakugo. If it wasn't for one for all, Bakugo may have actually won this just because it's a straight line. Moving on to round two. With Deku with the million points, he puts together a team of Bakugo, Ochako, and Kirishima. Now that with those four working together, they are next to unstoppable. With Bakugo on top, Deku at the front, Kirishima on the right, they can use them as a shield, and Ochaka making them all weightless. They're pretty much able to spend the entire time in the air. Anyone who even tries to get close to them is just blasted straight back down. No competition at all. Shoto is pretty much the only person who can even try to get to them. But, because he's not using his fire at this point, his ice just isn't able to do pretty much anything to them. They just destroy it. Explosion after explosion. Even Deku's able to tear straight through it. And then we move on to the tournament's third round, with Deku's team winning the first two rounds. 
The first round goes pretty much as usual, with Shinso actually getting the upper hand on Deku as he makes a sound to actually respond. This almost KOs Deku. Fortunately, the spirits within one for all free him and allows him to actually do something this round. And while Deku doesn't sympathize quite so much with Shinso this time round, he has always had that feeling that his quirk does always seem slightly more villainous, but he's never really let that get to him because of his relationship with Bakugo. They both have very destructive quirks, but they, neither of them have really considered being a villain with them. It's just not who they are. Moving on to the second round, we've got Deku and Shoto. Hearing Endeavor in the crowd, Deku looks over to see the number two hero, encouraging Todoroki to actually use his fire side. Deku, who's pretty much been training with Bakugo this entire time, almost feels personally attacked by the fact that Todoroki isn't using his fire side, so he spends the entire match edging it out of him. And while the end result is similar, Deku's intentions are less noble and more Goku-like, in that he wants the best fight. He wants to beat him at his best because, well, he thinks he can. Now this fight goes to be even more epic than in the anime. Ice and fire launching everywhere, but Deku is just bouncing off of the ice, bouncing around the fire. And in this version of events, we have a clear winner as Deku launches Todoroki out of the arena. Todoroki is just barely able to put up an ice wall to actually stop himself from smashing into the stone wall. And then we move on to fight number three with Bakugo. They've both been looking forward to this since the start of this tournament. They made each other a promise that no matter what, they'd both be in that final bout. And now they're there. Now it's time for them to show off what they've really got. And oh boy, it's like explosions start going off. Within 10 seconds, the arena is in ruins. Bakugo put his hand to the ground and blew up the arena to avoid Deku having actually anything to stand on, which puts them mostly on equal playing fields since they've got to both bounce around in the air. Bakugo is able to maneuver a bit better in the air though, with Deku having to use one for all to actually keep himself up. This makes the fight basically fair since Deku is mostly using one for all to keep himself in the air, Bakugo is able to keep blasting into him. The question becomes, is Baku going to run out of stamina first or will Deku? And after almost 15 minutes of solid explosions, a constant fireworks array, and two blows of movement in the air, the fight ends to show that Bakugo has beat Deku. You can see that Izuku is standing slightly outside of the arena, or at least where the arena was, and Bakugo is still barely floating in the arena, one arm barely shattered, the other arm blasting the ground to keep himself in the air. And that is how the UA Sports Festival has ended. With Izuku in second place, Bakugo in first place, barely, and Shoto in a clear third or fourth. You can see All Might handing out the awards, Azuku standing on the second podium, slightly shocked that he actually got ringed down. Bakugo holding one of his arms that's slightly broken, as someone has gone to go get the nurse, and All Might hands him the medal. Bakugo looks at the crowd and says, yeah, I'm number one, and none of you had better forget it. He looks at All Might and points to him, I'm coming for that spot. And yeah, it's been great coming onto your channel, I hope you all enjoyed my section of the what if. I actually quite enjoyed this one since this is not actually a topic I was super familiar with. Up until you pitched the idea of doing the Tasmanian Devil, it just didn't occur to me. But it was actually quite fun to do. Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Take care, and peace out mortals, have an amazing day. We pick up our story in a bit of a different location than usual. Izuku would be back in the classroom after having gotten second place in a sports festival. And that's the only thing on Bakugo's mind right now. Just completely telling Deku, hey, second place. Like, their whole dynamic has essentially changed because Bakugo has just been calling Deku second place. And Deku has not exactly been taking too kindly to that. Izuku has been kind of salty because of this and so his aggro mode would be on pretty much all the time. Time. Nobody would really be talking to Deku that much, and eventually Aizawa steps into the classroom being like, Hey students, pay attention. Midnight's gonna be here today to help you guys out with a couple of things. As he gets into a sleeping bag and straight passes out. From here, Bakugo looks at Deku and he goes, Alright, for real, let's pay attention. As Deku's like, whatever. And from here, Midnight goes on to start explaining everything. Now, Midnight walks in and she immediately starts talking to them about what their future hero names are gonna be. Now, he's Izuku, once he hears this from Midnight, would immediately just be thinking, what is my hero name going to be? I haven't really given it a lot of thought. Eventually thinking, he's like, you know what? I think that the hero name Taz. Taz actually sounds kind of cool, right? That's the nickname that Bakugo gave him when he was a kid instead of Deku. And Deku's actually really liked the sound of that. So he goes with it. He's like, hey, I think I want to go with the name Taz. 
the spin hero. As Midnight's like, oh, well, that name's actually kind of fitting. I think it suits you, kid. And from here, Deku just looks towards the direction of Bakugo with a smirk on his face as he says, yeah, it does suit me a little bit, doesn't it? From here, Izuku turns towards the direction of the classroom and just watches as there's a little bit of a montage as everybody's picking their hero names and this goes just like it does in canon. When Bakugo goes up to the front and picks his hero name Lord Explosion Murder, Izuku immediately starts laughing at it being like, Bakugo, how could you have picked a worse name? Like, I don't think you could have done it even if you tried. And Bakugo is like, shut up second place. And then everybody looks at Deku and they start laughing and they're like, oh, that is true. Like, Bakugo is the winner now. And then from here, Deku's like, shut up. Like, everyone here knows that if I would have went all out, I could have easily destroyed the stadium. And they're like, that is right. Izuku can't even go all out most of the time because of the restriction of his quirk. And everybody starts realizing, yeah, that is true. Deku's quirk would actually make it very hard to be a pro hero. Everybody starts realizing, isn't his weakness in closed spaces? And they would start laughing. Like, Kaminari would be like... Pfft as he just lets out the biggest laugh and izuku looks to kaminari as like his teeth his, his his claws come out and he's like what'd you say as he starts scratching up kaminari's desk and kaminari's like oh 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 like i said that like i would lose to you 100 percent of the time and deku's like right 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 so uh don't say that again and deku just goes back to his seat as everybody then finally has to pick their internships now when it comes to the internship section, Izuku's thinking to himself, who does he intern with? Does he go with a different hero or does he go with Gran Torino since All Might recommended him? Seeing as nobody really knows who Gran Torino is, Izuku is kind of skeptical about it, but he's like, whatever. And so what pretty much ends up happening is Izuku decides, look, I'll go with Gran Torino, but if the dude is a weirdo, I'm leaving. As from here, what would end up happening is Deku would find himself in Bakugo's house. And Izuku and Bakugo would be playing video games as Bakugo would just beat Deku and Deku would smash the controller on the ground just thinking to himself, not another one. As Bakugo was like, here, just throw it in this basket. And there would be a basket of controllers broken and one's titled Bakugo, one's titled Deku because they both have anger issues, right? And... <laughs> <laughs> bro this is the weirdest concept that i've ever thought of no but seriously they they're they're playing video games and eventually they hear a loud voice in the kitchen saying hey kowski get your damn ass down here food's ready as deku's like oh food's ready i guess and bakugo's like all right as from here you know they make their way towards the kitchen and once they're there izuku would say mmm food i can't wait as he uses his quirk to start spinning around and bro literally devours everything before even bakugo finishes washing his hands or Mitsuki even gets to take off her cooking robe or even Bakugo's father gets to sit down on the table when Deku's done eating he's like all right we're seconds and Mitsuki looks to Deku's direction with the stare of ultimate ominous death Deku looks to her and he's like why are you looking at me like that and Bakugo just gives Deku this look of bro run Deku from here blitzes out of there using his top speed. Bro literally goes into mock levels of speed as, you know, she chases after him and she gets in the car and just starts driving recklessly, making her, her way towards Deku's house. As Deku would slam the door of his room and hide in there thinking to himself, please don't come, please don't come, please don't come. And eventually you hear a knock at the door. And that would be Mitsuki. Mitsuki then looks towards the direction of Deku and she would say, hey, open the door. I just want to talk. And Deku's like, nah, nah, nah. Like, you trying to hit me. So Mitsuki goes, all right. She rushes back to her car and gets her tools. As she literally takes off the hinges of Deku's door and goes in there and clobbers the man. As Inko's like, what, what, what's happening? And Mitsuki would say, he ate all of our dinner. And Inko's like, oh, that, that's it? Like, you guys are more than welcome to come eat over here. As Deku would just be about to get like his sixth punch to the head. And Mitsuki would be like, oh, really? And Inko's like, yeah, like I, I cooked up a pretty big feast seeing as Deku eats a lot. And Mitsuki's like, I'm going to eat your dinner tonight, Deku. And I want you to watch me. And Deku just literally has to sit there and watch Mitsuki eat his dinner and the whole family as Bakugo and everybody else would end up arriving. And Deku would just sit there with an expression of, bro, this is not fair on his face, right? As from here, what pretty much ends up going down is Deku and everybody else would just have to watch as, you know, they're having a great dinner. And the next day around, Deku would find himself on the train on his way towards uh, Gran Torino, who would currently be waiting for Deku. But pretty much, 
all that would be happening is Deku would make his way towards the area where Gran Torino lives, look it down at this piece of paper and be like, eh, this should be the place. As he opens the door, seeing as, you know, he was like, I'm not going to knock. He literally just lets himself in. And once he does, he would see Gran Torino on the ground with blood over him. Deku seeing this doesn't get scared, doesn't freak out, isn't like, oh my God, he's dead. He just walks over there casually and he's like, uh. Looks like the uh, old geezer, you know, kicked the bucket as he starts walking away and Deku then gets grabbed by the foot by Gran Torino. As soon as he sees that, Deku's like, zombie! And he spins like crazy using his quirk, which would lead Gran Torino to be like, ah, 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 as he gets sent flying into one of the corners of his room, having to activate the quirk jet to stop himself. And Deku then looks back to Gran Torino as he's like, dude, I thought you were dead. Gran Torino's like, if you thought I was dead, why didn't you freak out? And Deku's like, I did you'd grab me like i thought you were a zombie and gran torino he like stops right and let me tell you bro lets out the biggest laugh ever but ultimately from here gran torino would just give up as he looks at deku and he's like kid you got some screws loose but so did all mine but that's fine i'll just beat it out of you as he smirks and from here, Gran Torino goes on to start blitzing throughout all the walls. And from here, he proceeds to kick Deku so hard on his head that Deku gets sent down to the floor. And Deku just starts holding his head so hard. He's like, ah, as Gran Torino looks at him and he's like, kid, I didn't mean to hit you that hard. And Izuku looks back at Gran Torino and it's almost as if a demonic aura would come off of Deku. Like Gran Torino could swear that he saw horns and Deku's aura would change from normal to like red. His eyes get like a red hue almost, right? And Deku, like his teeth get sharper. His claws get longer. And Deku starts spinning like crazy, just demolishing everything in Gran Torino's house. As Gran Torino would be like, kid, kid, calm down, right? Like trying to dodge for his life. Like normally, All Might, when he was training him, he was able to just beat him up and like, like nothing happened. But Deku, Deku's a different breed. Deku was not finna let that slide. Deku is a walking pair of black air forces. And when Deku gets hit on the head, he's not playing no games. Deku was not finna let that slide. And so what does Deku do? You guys might be wondering. Well, let me tell you. Deku proceeds to start literally trying to kill Gran Torino. Like, like, bro, I'm not playing. Like, Deku literally goes after Gran Torino bloodlusted mode. And Gran Torino has to literally fight for his life to try to survive and just stay out of Deku's reach. Because Deku is so fast that he's keeping up with Gran Torino. And Gran Torino is barely escaping by the hair of his, of, uh, of his neck, right? Gran Torino eventually does make his way outside. And once he is outside, Gran Torino looks to Deku and he's like, kid, 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 stop. Like, that's enough. And Deku finally calms down and he's like, don't you ever hit me in the head again. That hurt. As Gran Torino's like, dude, it's part of the training. Like, I did that to All Might. And he's like, am I All Might? And Gran Torino looks at Deku and he's like, am I? And Gran Torino looks at him and he's like, no. So Izuku goes, all right then. So don't train me like you trained All Might because I'm going to be way better than him. And from here, Gran Torino's like, well, this kid is clearly like, he clearly thinks a hell of a lot of himself as from here all might goes on to look toward the direction of deku and what would pretty much end up happening uh gran torino sorry would be that he then looks inside his house and for the first time he realizes deku just trashed his house gran torino from here looks at deku and would just remain silent as he's like kid you trashed my house and Deku looks inside as he's like, oh man. And like, that's all he says. He's not even sad or, or like, like upset or even scared of Gran Torino. He's like, oh, I hate having to clean up after myself. As he says, where's your broom? And Gran Torino's like, it's over there. And Deku's just like, fine. He starts spinning like crazy and using the broom and the sweeper just starts picking up all the dust that he would have let in Gran Torino's house. And in about 10 minutes, Deku would have cleaned the whole place up, leaving it way better than it was before Deku even got there. With Gran Torino being all like, kid, all I'm gonna say is if this hero stuff doesn't work out for you, consider becoming some sort of a maid or something like that. And Deku's like, ha ha ha, all right, let's get this training started. As from here, Gran Torino will tell him, all right, sure, in due time, but for today, I'm taking a nap. Gran Torino goes on to take a nap, and the next day, Zuku would find himself on a bullet train with um, Gran Torino, as Gran Torino would tell him that today they're gonna be doing a little bit of hero patrolling. Now, Gran Torino goes on to look towards Deku and ask him if he thinks he's ready for that. 
And Izuku's like, you kidding? We're going to patrol the streets of this area? It's so peaceful. I haven't even seen a dog bark yet. As Gran Torino's like, oh, no, right. Like, this area, it's perfect. Like, there's almost no crime here. We're going to be going to Hosu City. As Izuku's like, all right, now we're talking. I've heard that area has a couple of different things going on. Not to mention, I've heard a couple of things about a certain hero killer. Pretty excited to see if I can meet that individual. And Gran Torino's like, this kid's either got a death wish or he's actually that strong. But Gran Torino just thinks he's like, bro made me run from him. Never mind. Like, this kid is the real deal. Like, this kid is legit, right? And what ends up happening after this is Izuku would simply just get on the train as Gran Torino and himself would be there. They're chilling, right? Like, they're, they're on their way to Hosu. And everything could not be going smoother until eventually some strange creature with a brain on top of its head lunges at the train. And Gran Torino has to come crashing out through the window, mind you, to hit it and change its course. He would then scream at Deku and be like, hey, kid, stay on the train. Protect the civilians, right? And Deku just thinks to himself, protect the civilians? Like, what do I look like? As Izuku spins a hole straight through the side of the train and makes his way towards Gran Torino. From here, he goes over towards the Nomu and using his abilities, since he is in the air, would spin a tornado so powerful for the briefest of instants that it would eat the entirety of the Nomu. Like, the tornado is so powerful that the Nomu just literally gets eaten up, right? And the Nomu gets torn to absolute shreds. Like, let me tell you guys, the Nomu is done for. By the way, let me just reposition myself real quick because I was starting to slouch and like I'm not trying to slouch during the whole video, right? But regardless though, right? So the Nomu is obviously like torn to shreds. Deku just beat it. That's, you know, that's old news or whatever, right? But pretty much what ends up happening after this is that Izuku would find himself like on top of a building as he's like, what's next, old man? And then from here, Izuku's senses start with going crazy and Izuku's like, wait. I think I've recognized that voice. And just keep in mind, Izuku's senses are also going to be off the charts just due to the fact that, I mean, the kid is a Tasmanian devil. And what comes with that? Amazing senses, amazing hearing, amazing, you know, like, like smelling, you know, very good sense of smell, hearing and all that stuff. And very, very good instincts, right? And so what pretty much ends up happening is Deku would hear the voice of Ida crying out in pain as Deku wonders to himself what in the world Ida's doing here. But he would blitz towards that direction telling, you know, Gran Torino that he'll be right back. And from here, he would get right next to Ida as he would notice that the hero killer would actually be stabbing Ida. And Izuku would watch as he would kick Ida off of him so hard that uh, like the hero killer's skull gets like busted in slightly, right? And the hero killer just completely gets knocked out because keep in mind Deku blitzed at him using his tornado like Kirk right and just kicked him and Stain was sent flying so hard at the wall he ricocheted off of it and his head was literally indented with Deku's foot and Deku just looks at Ida who's on the floor crying being like get away from here he's mine and Deku's like he just looks at the hero killer and he's like you talking about that guy right there that's on the floor like nah I don't think he's yours buddy what are you even doing here and he's like you wouldn't understand he he almost killed my brother and Deku looks at Ida with just this expression of bro are you dumb like are you dumb Bro's name is literally the hero killer, and he managed to beat your brother, who's most likely stronger than you. What in the world made you think that you had even a slightest chance of beating this guy? I beat him, but that's only because, like, I'm really powerful, but you... You're a side character. Stay in your lane, Ida. As from here, he grabs Ida and Native, taking them to the roof, calling 911 as a like a little ambulance would come. And the ambulance wouldn't even be for Ida or Native, mind you. Bro literally called an ambulance for Stain. He's a walking Air Force, bro. He's a walking Black Air Force. But I digress. What pretty much ends up happening after this is Izuku would find himself in the middle of the of the of the fire as the Nomus would be coming in and out, and Izuku would land in front of uh, you know Endeavor as he would have just killed one of the Nomus as the very last one would be flying away, and Izuku as everybody's watching that thing escape with a kid, Izuku comes in using the tornado and his claws and would rip the brain out of its head as izuku causes the nomu to pretty much be sent down flying grabbing it by the throat and just squeezing it as he keeps spinning right and the kid would have been dropped by now but deku would have made sure that he dropped in an area of water so the kid is fine and deku's just riding the nomu until it crashes and then after that deku looks at it 
as bro literally eats the nomu bro eats it who eats nomus apparently deku but bro starts devouring the nomu and from here he would look towards the direction of where the crowd is as you know he immediately goes back over there and they just start like instantly praising him they're like wow like 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 ain't that second place in the sports festival and izuku hearing that he just grits his teeth thinking to himself Baku go as he's like you know what maybe i should have injured those people in the stands because then people wouldn't be calling me number two but the crowd would form around deku when they would start cheering his name they'd be like izuku 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 but ultimately what would pretty much end up happening is deku would find himself in the police office right the next day after izuku would just be waking up bro's groggy bro has early morning like cr uh crankiness and this would be when the police dog would enter being like ah good you're all awake todoroki's in the office and even ida's in there as he would go on to look at izuku and say kid that was some mighty fine work you did last night however ultimately you are going to be getting credit for it seeing as everybody saw you and we're not going to be giving you the credit for stain and we're just going to be saying endeavor took care of it because if we did that you know um you know uh gran torino would get a lot of backlash for that ultimately though he is going to be losing his hero license for a couple of months for allowing you to be in that situation and izuku looks at the the the, the, the guy and he's like what did you just say and he's like, yeah, we have to suspend Gran Torino's hero license for allowing you to act the way you did. And Izuku's like, all right, so cool. So let's say that I wasn't there. And the kid that the Nomu took, who was going to stop that Nomu? And the guy goes, well, I understand that. But the thing is, we can't allow you to fight without a provisional license. And Izuku's like, all right, all right, all right. So uh, let me ask you this. What's stopping me from becoming a villain right now? And the, guys look, the guy looks at him and he's like, well, I, I suppose the law and heroes. And Izuku's like, nah, like the thing that's stopping me from becoming a villain right now is you pardoning Gran Torino for that and giving me my credit for defeating Stain because I beat him, not Endeavor. As from here, you know, the dog guy, he looks at him and he's like, kid, like you're crazy. Like, do you know what you're asking me to do? And Deku's like, oh, I know exactly what I'm asking you to do. Did I stutter? Like, 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 did, did I stutter? And the dog guy, he just looks at him and he's like, no, but like, we, we, unfortunately we can't do that. And Deku then looks towards the direction of that dog guy. And he's like, all right, well then, so what happens now? And the dog guy is like, all right, look kid, like, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll not, we'll pardon him. All right. Like, like nothing will happen. And Izuku looks at him and he goes, yeah, I know nothing's going to happen. Like, like, like you got me messed up. You trying to take away his hero license for being a hero. If I wasn't there, then Hosu would have been in shambles without me. He's like, not only did I do that, but I saved one of these pro heroes from dying too. And I defeated Stain and Anomu. What else, What did your precious heroes do? Oh, right. Nothing. That's why I should be out there patrolling the streets with a real license and not wasting my time at the school. But here I am, right? And the dog guy looks at him and he's like, well, well, well yes, but that, it, uh, 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 he just starts stuttering. And Deku looks at him and he's like, get out of my room right now. And the dog guy looks away and you know, from here, Todoroki and Ida just look at him and they're like, damn, bro, like, what's up with that? And Deku's was like, nah, because he really had me messed up thinking he was finna tell me what's finna happen. Like, you got me messed up. Like, either, either what I want to happen happens or you're going to have to have to deal with a very powerful new villain. And, you know, like Todoroki's like, OK, I, I won't take the powerful away from you, but you were kidding about becoming a villain. Right. And Deku's was like, maybe might suit me better though and Ida just starts laughing he's like he's kidding though and Deku starts laughing as well because he was obviously joking but ultimately after this they make their way back to school and it's here where All Might would say well 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 students you guys seem to have done very well during your trips what's saying that we have a little bit of a friendly race to see what your progress is everybody has such a fun race and following this what would end up happening is we end up getting a montage in which everybody's training for the final exam now what would pretty much end up happening after this is izuku would ace his test right he aces it because he does study with bakugo and because of this he would ultimately find himself against one of the pro heroes right and the person that he's gonna be having to face is gonna be midnight with his teammate being who should his teammate be who should his teammate be koda let's say koda's his teammate 
but ultimately Bakugo is still going to have to face off against All Might with his teammate being Mineta because I'm going to be retconning that Mineta got expelled. I actually like Mineta and you know, he, 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 he's there for a bunch of comedic relief. So we're going to be keeping him. But ultimately, what pretty much ends up happening is Izuku would find himself in the area, right? And Midnight comes in and she immediately starts trying to use her pheromone attack, right? And Izuku's like, that's cute. He literally forms a tornado and all of the pheromones that she had created would be all the way up in the air, like 60 feet up. Nobody can like is getting affected by that. Izuku then looks towards Midnight and she would say, combat it is as she grabs her whip and tries to whip Deku and Deku grabs it with one hand and yanks her towards him as he grabs her by the throat and picks her up and says submit and midnight bro midnight literally gives up as anime fans we love to show our support to our favorite shows by rocking anime apparel but something I'm pretty sure we can all agree on is it's so expensive. So I've partnered up with Fandom to bring you all affordable, high quality anime merch that you are sure to love. And if you use my code Zether at checkout, you can even get an extra 10% off the already affordable merch. Keep in mind, it does come from overseas sellers, so its sizing is going to be different since it's overseas. That said, let's get back into the video. Before I start today's recording, I quickly want to preface this by saying that I'm going to be using a new mic for the rest of this video, and I want you guys to let me know what you guys think about the sound quality and whether I should stick with this mic or the mic that I've been using for the previous parts of this series. That said, one more teeny tiny little thing. It is raining pretty heavily outside, so if you guys do end up hearing a little bit of those rain noises, then just ignore them. Try to, try to, try to zone them out, but I'll probably end up editing it out so you might not even notice it's there. That said, let's finally jump back into the what if. So continuing on the story, Izuku would have just handed the biggest L to Midnight and all of her companions, and by that I mean like her work people, which would be pro heroes, would be thinking to themselves that Izuku is very much so very, very, very OP. I mean, the dude literally made a pro hero submit and caught the most WW of the entire day. Like the whole class, nobody caught so much as a one-sided victory as Izuku had. And this one was the thing that pretty much ended up killing the camel's back. That said, after this, everybody simultaneously ended up agreeing that they would all want to make their way to the mall, and that's where they were all going to be buying their supplies for the Forest Training Camp Arc trip, right? Now, all of them end up making their way there, and once there, everybody pretty much ends up going their own different ways. Bakugo and Izuku would be the last ones left, as Bakugo would say, Oi, Deku, where do we go? And Deku would say, probably to get some mosquito spray, but other than that, I have everything I need. And Bakugo's like, same. As from here, they start walking, when suddenly a man in a black hoodie would end up grabbing Deku by the side of the neck and not placing all five fingers, only four. Now, we all know exactly who this is, and it would be Shigaraki. Shigaraki would look to Deku and it would be here that Bakugo looks towards the direction of Izuku and the guy as there would be a stiff moment of silence where the pressure would be very much so thick with Shigaraki saying, if you don't want to fall right now and die, I suggest that you, as Deku would immediately spin using one for all activating it so fast that Shigaraki, he didn't even get the chance to point his finger at Deku's neck. Shigaraki was sent flying into a trash can before he could even realize it. And by the time that Shigaraki knew what was happening, Izuku was already jumping on top of him and literally scratched the life out of Shigaraki's chest. Blood started gushing out of Shigaraki's chest area as Deku looks towards him and says that it was not a smart idea to come after him. He's the most capable of the bunch and for him to have literally thrown himself into the hands of the heroes was the most idiotic thing in the world. Shigaraki would say that if he doesn't want to cause a scene, he better calm down. And Izuku's like, oh, I'm more than willing to cause a scene. Matter of fact, I'm willing to blow this entire mall up if it means capturing you, little league of villains. If I don't, then you guys will become a problem in my side for the foreseeable future, so I'd rather take care of you now. As Shigaraki looks to the eyes of Izuku, and he looks at the eyes of somebody who's literally not afraid to kill you. Like, he sees these eyes that are just telling him, don't mess with him. And so Shigaraki is just knocked out and then thrown into the back of a police cruiser as he's escorted towards Tartarus, the My Hero Academia prison for people with powerful quirks. Shigaraki 
would then from here be pretty much just jailed in and nobody would be there to actually end up freeing him obviously kuragiri could potentially do this but that would mean that we're going to be getting an additional tartarus breakout arc and because of that the forest training camp arc is pretty much going to just be a normal arc there's not going to be a moment in which all for one ends up sending muscular or or uh you know spinner or magma or even mr compressor or dobby seeing as all of their efforts would mainly be focused on trying to do the tartarus Tartarus breakout mission which means that things are going to be going a lot different than they would in canon and the forest training camp arc would actually just be a completely normal moment in which Deku and the rest of class 1a just gets to train like normal kids they don't have to worry about the villains coming after them or ruining their entire experience for no reason they get to just be kids they get to be in school and they get to have the same experience as their upperclassmen had when they did the forest camp training trip everything goes by silky smooth and coda doesn't have a little bit of a redemption arc because of that however he is safe for the entire thing so you kind of take the good with the bad that said though continuing the story the heroes themselves would find themselves in a little bit of an awkward situation because they know that a tartarus breakout will most likely happen if the league of villains ends up wanting to pretty much break out shigaraki from its prison right however they don't know when that's going to be happening or if that's going to be happening whatsoever so there's no real clues or what's going to be going down so everything's kind of up in the air so school would continue just like normal and all of the events in the my hero storyline would just be constant eventually they make their way towards the provisional hero license arc and since all might still does have his quirk he's able to actually participate in that and help alongside gang uh gang gang orca to be the villain for that specific portion right that said however the arc would pretty much be consistent and what would end up happening is deku and bakugo would both actually end up failing the test deku because of his very eccentric personality to put it lightly bakugo as well and todoroki would end up failing as well because of inasa's rivalry with him right and so the entirety of that would pretty much end up going a little bit different and now those guys have to be in remedial courses to try to get the provisional license thing way later than everybody else meaning deku's gonna have to deal with little kids later in the arc but for now izuku would have to be put in a situation a little bit different than what would end up actually happening in canon see this time around once they go back to class and the big three would actually end up arriving in class to tell them about how they're inexperienced and through the hero course and you know training with them they'll actually end up getting more and more experience right but Deku this time around, since All Might still has his quirk, All Might would be one of the people who actually sends Izuku a note saying that he wants him to train underneath him. And Izuku ends up actually going to train with All Might. Now, it's during these days that Izuku would end up learning how to run a hero agency, and Izuku would learn a couple more things about All Might's youth and childhood. Just a little bit more of a bonding experience, because Izuku already pretty much has what it takes to be a hero, he just needs to tone out the eccentricness of his personality, which is putting it lightly at best. However, continuing on with the theme of the story and what ended up happening previously, Shigaraki's breakout would be right around the corner. And one of these days, it's definitely going to happen. It would just so happen that while Izuku and All Might were out on patrol near Tartarus, about 30 minutes away, there would be word that an explosion would have gone off and All Might would be one of the first heroes making his way there. They would end up arriving there in about 3 minutes with Izuku using full cowling and All Might using his abilities of one for all to jump through the air and pretty much fly izuku using his tornado like abilities would be able to stay in the air and keep up with all might going if not a little bit faster than him making it there just in time to see a bunch of villains actually trying to break out villains such as lady nagant shigaraki muscular would be broken out actually not muscular but like other villains who are very powerful and bulky and stuff like that right now because of this the heroes would all have their hands full and deku being there would think to himself that this is finally the big break he's been waiting for all might as soon as this happens would lunge in and immediately get into action trying to face off against these villains chainsaw man would be there not not the chainsaw man but like a chainsaw villain right and what would pretty much end up happening is he's all might would end up facing him as izuku comes in towards these villains and would immediately rattle them up he would land on the ground as he immediately 
activates a gigantic tornado sucking in a mass amount of villains as all of these villains would begin to get spun and spun and spun around leading them to get nauseous and literally throw up as a couple of them would be tossed into the area getting unconscious after hitting their heads and many of them would actually end up surviving this that said izuku would tap into full cowling blitz at them using his claws would slash at them and leave them in a state where they're no longer able to fight and after izuku does that he would continue to do that more and more and more and more until eventually he claws his way through all of the villains and makes his way closer and closer towards shigaraki he sees Kurigiri there, and with that, Izuku would actually end up just being like, nah, like you're not about to sit here and escape. This time, you lose, as he immediately activates an insane tornado that would be like a catastrophe level, and that tornado would suck Kurigiri and Shigaraki in it so much that like Shigaraki literally almost, like Shigaraki has his body pretty much torn like it is injured beyond repair and kurigiri himself seeing as he's a shadow and that metal part would be there is Sh Sh kurigiri is not having a very much so fun time his entire anatomy would be getting ripped to shreds inside of this tornado and izuku would have only have activated for quite a couple of seconds meaning that all this damage that izuku would have done to the villains would have been done in such a small amount of time such a small amount of a portion of izuku's power would have been all it took to do all of this catastrophic damage to all of these villains right and so eventually after that happens another portal would open with the man stepping out saying that it looks like he managed to take out his successor he would then turn to all might as he would say i think it's about time that i do the same to yours shooting black tendrils at the direction of deku who would easily be able to dodge them with all for one saying that he is quite capable reminding him of all might back in the day when he first faced off against him now izuku then looks towards that man and he would look towards all might as he would say is that the big bad and all might not all for one from here would go on to give a very very much so anticlimactic villain speech which deku doesn't listen to and he would be like <sighs> so boring i thought you were the strongest villain ever but all you've done since you've gotten here is bore me to death let's skip the chit chat and get straight into the fight as all for one looks towards the direction of deku and says a lot different than all might i'll give you that and izuku says yeah and my approach to defeating you is a lot different too you're not gonna get out of here alive izuku blitzing at him using his tornado abilities as all for one would laugh and would put up a bear here izuku would be spinning and using a ninjutsu like power to try to rip through that barrier but izuku would be able to break through it but all my offer one sorry would just end up putting another one and another one and another barrier and he would just layer it to the point where izuku can't get near offer one izuku from here would realize that he's not going to be getting anywhere at this rate and so he would tell all might that they need to find a way to get all for one as far away from the tartarus prison as possible like all might has to land a punch that can send all for one flying and all might would say not a problem as both he and izuku with full cowling would lunge in side by side as they begin facing off against all for one in an iconic way looking very much so similar to the style that they fought off against wolfram both dodging out of the way of all for one strange long range attacks and equally being able to get closer and closer until ultimately they end up landing a blow on all for one at each side that would send all for one flying miles across now all for one would have put up a barrier which would have taken most of the attack and through a regeneration quirk that he would have recently added would end up actually surviving the blow and having more than like 80 percent of his health still there and stamina and once he would land he would end up landing and saying i congratulate you heroes all might it looks like you might have found a worthy successor after hall but this ends here as izuku would say you're right all for one it does as he would look to all might and say get out of here now and all might would immediately jump off as all for one is like what and immediately as soon as this happens izuku would spin like never before using the entirety of 100 percent full cowling as in such a looney tunes fashion izuku would create the biggest tornado the world's ever seen and it would be there for an instant leaving a crater behind so massive that would ultimately rip all for one limb 
from limb so fast. Like the power of the winds would be so fast and sharp that all for one would immediately die, leaving no room for his regeneration quirk to regenerate anything. All for one would immediately have been turned back to dust and would be back in the earth where he truly belongs. His life being cut short by one Izuku Midoriya. And once this tornado would go away, All Might comes back into the battlefield, looking at Deku, who would actually end up having um, very much so an injured body, seeing as he went all out with his quirk and 100% full cowling. So Izuku most definitely ended up pretty much like tearing a couple muscles and some of his bones would have some fractures in it and Izuku's just all in all not having a great time but he would have actually ended up defeating the big bad of the series which does definitely count for something. Izuku would end up being healed basically overnight by Recovery Girl and about two days later the heroes would be informed that they're going to be going on some sort of taking out overhaul mission where they're all going to be doing their parts trying to take out overhaul and saving a little girl by the name of Ari, saying that since they have his location and he's working on quirk erasure uh, bullets, it's best that they do this now. And so what would pretty much end up happening is Izuku would end up being called alongside All Might, seeing as All Might would vouch for Deku, saying that he was the one who defeated All for One, so he thinks that Izuku is more than capable and ready to actually help out in the ultimate defeation of Overhaul. And so, the final villain arc would finally commence. Izuku and all of the heroes would lunge towards the direction of Overhaul's house, and Mirio, using his ability, would get closer and closer to Overhaul by the second, ultimately being the first one to reach it, and facing off against Overhaul in a fashion that would be so identical to canon, it's almost comical. However, once Mirio's about to get shot with a quirk-destroying bullet, Deku would come lunging in, having destroyed the wall using his tornado ability to form walls and fall follow Mirio would have actually ended up getting hit by the bullet himself as he lunges at Eri and ends up grabbing her. Eri being scared would activate her um her own quirk reversing the effects of the quirk destruction bullets and leaving Deku to feel like nothing ended up happening. For a second Izuku felt very weak and like things were missing but it immediately just came back and Deku looks to overhaul as he would say it's about time that somebody puts you in your place spinning towards him and ultimately ending up landing a vicious attack which would send overhaul flying leading overhaul to realize that it needs as much power as he can get leading him to fuse with his minions and becoming a large powerful version of what he was this would lead deku to think to himself that there's nothing left to do but defeat him and so izuku would immediately lunge up into the air punch the lights out of overhaul and then send him crashing through the building through the roof mind you leading overhaul to end up being in the air as deku goes on to land multiple barrages of punches and kicks and and just spinning in the air causing overhaul to pretty much end up getting absolutely curb stomped and izuku landing on the ground as overhaul is completely taken care of and izuku would be rushed out by everybody who's there right which would pretty much just end up congratulating deku for his brave and valiant efforts in the ultimate defeat of over of all for one right now ultimately this would end up ultimately why do i keep saying that word why do, why am i saying ultimately but anyways, it pretty much just ends up leading into Izuku getting his provisional license just because bro defeated all for one, then defeated Overhaul in the matter of a week. So the heroes are like, bro, th this kid's ready. He probably just, just needs to spend like one more year in UA. He could literally skip the grades. So he makes his way towards the direction of class, uh, you know, like three class uh the, the class that mirio and you know uh um, um um sun eater and you know nezure is in and so izuku would end up actually passing ua graduating earlier than everybody else and going on to be all my sidekick or actually not all my sidekick but going on to pretty much run the agency that all might had and learning under the sidekicks of all might seeing as all Might's offer a one for all would pretty much have ended up running out after one more year of using it continuously and this would lead Izuku to being the new number one hero of the My Hero Academia universe. 
That said, though, ladies and gentlemen, that is where I'm going to be ending. What if Deku had Taz's powers? This is one of those what ifs that I'm pretty sure old OG Zether would have probably done. And not only is it something I think, it's something that I actually wrote down like three years ago. An idea that I had cooking alongside one of my popular ideas that is, what if Deku had microbots? That one was also a very enthralling uh, series, and I think that you guys would like that one. Although the mic quality is a little bit on the not exactly that good side and it's a bit challenged when it comes to that but other than that the series itself is great leave a like on this video if you guys ended up enjoying it seeing as a ton of work went into making it and with all that out of the way ladies and gentlemen if you guys love the video then uh you love the video but uh wh what am i trying to say again oh yeah right i'm out peace bye